Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today is our second day of the conference 100th University of uh, Ukrainian Formalism. Um, and I'm very pleased to uh, I'm very pleased to, to introduce you our uh, first speaker, uh, historian Alexander Dmitriev, um, who will present his uh, paper on Alexander Bilecki between the old and the new literary science. Uh, Alexander is a former associate of the Politaev Institute for Theoretical and Historical Studies in the Humanities. Now he is a visiting scholar at the Research Center for the East European Studies at the University of Bremen. Uh, his research interests are within the history of science and intellectual history, including history of Marxism. Uh, he's also the author of uh, two books. Uh, the first one is uh, his monograph from 2004, Marxism without the proletariat, uh, Georg or George Lukacs and the early Frankfurt School in the 1920s, 1930s. And also he is the co-author of the book Atlantis of Soviet National Modernism, the formal method in Ukraine. Uh, so Sasha, the floor is yours. You're welcome. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, now it's okay? Yeah. I uh, would be also organizer for demonstration of screen. Yeah, yeah, maybe I will do it. Yeah. Because uh, I want to see some of Uh, sorry, can I uh, uh, try to demonstrate of, aha, uh -huh. okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now is okay? I put uh, F5 or F6? I'm sorry, F5. Mm -hmm. It's okay? I suppose this one. And uh, thank you, Galina. Thank you for another uh, organizer for invite me uh, to speak now about Alexander Bilecki. Uh, I repeat uh, some of my uh, presentation in uh, December when uh, Andrei Portnov and uh, others uh, uh, try to discuss Ukrainian uh, modernism and uh, intellectual history, uh, but now my uh, accent uh, would be uh, uh, mostly on a new way of uh, uh, synthesis uh, uh, by Bilecki between old uh, and new uh, literary science, uh, but not uh, only in the field of scholarship, but uh, also in field of uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, literature itself, uh, because uh, as uh, uh, pupil and alumni of uh, Kharkiv Imperial University, uh, Belecki all his life uh, would be bearer of uh, good academic tradition. Uh, even uh, Alexei Losev uh, and uh, his wife uh, in the end of the uh, 40 years, uh, remember about the uh, table of uh, private docent uh, Alexander Bilecki uh, before the doors of um, his flat in uh, Kharkiv uh, with pre-revolutionary um, orthography. And uh, this kind of uh, uh, line of uh, uh, intellectual and uh, uh, scholars integrity uh, were very crucial for Belecki and his self-consciousness, uh, but with a lot of reservation. And I also uh, put attention about this uh, reservation because Belecki was not only 
uh, of fossils of uh, uh, good science uh, of pre-revolutionary uh, time uh, and uh, uh, 1917 uh, and uh, also civil war uh, and the Ukrainian independence uh, have uh, uh, some real influence uh, for Belecki uh, intellectual evolution and uh, yesterday we also uh, discuss uh, a lot uh, uh, about uh, this problem, what is old and especially what is new uh, for the 20 period uh, and for the development of uh, Ukrainian formalism and uh, what is especially new uh, for Belecki. Uh, uh, Belecki, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, can be understood and uh, researched uh, uh, also in context uh, or in comparison with uh, uh, Dmitro Chizhevsky, uh heritage and uh, uh, between uh, Kiev and tradition of Vladimir Peretz and uh, uh, Kharkiv's uh, tradition of uh, Potebnya, both uh, uh, Belecki and Chizhevsky uh, put it uh, uh, their own ways uh, in pre uh, in uh, in the twenties, in the thirties, and um, especially after the Second World War. Uh, but uh, when we uh, can attention to the uh, general reputation of uh, Belecki now in the end of Soviet period and in aftermath, uh, we have. Uh, uh, picture of uh, uh, recognized classics uh, uh, with reedition of uh, uh, his vault, but uh, uh, really large uh, uh, archive archive of Belecki, um, as for me, uh, not uh, researched uh, in the year of Ukrainian independence uh, uh, after. Uh, 1991. Uh, we have uh, some reedition of uh, his work of uh, early period, uh, some work of uh, his uh, Soviet period with a lot of uh, uh, Soviet uh, features and treats, uh, but really uh, whole figure of Belecki and especially early Belecki and Belecki uh, formalists uh, not recognized and uh, even uh, not uh, reopened now. And uh, uh, my attempt uh, is not uh, the climb of this uh, uh, reopen um, possibility, but uh, I uh, have to stress uh, uh, some of the uh, main uh, features of uh, uh, his uh, intellectual heritage uh, uh, that essential for all our subject about the evolution of uh, Ukrainian formalism. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in the period of uh, um, uh, struggle for Ukrainian independence, uh, Belecki published uh, some of his uh, maybe semi uh, broad audience uh, thought about the uh, uh, whole evolution of uh, uh, aesthetic and uh, uh, intellectual uh, development. And uh, it's possible to see uh, in this uh, citation on the screen uh, some reference to phenomenology, maybe to Husserland tradition as Bogdan Igor Antonich uh, uh, would be then uh, also stressed uh, in uh, uh, Polish occupied Lviv. Uh, but really, I suppose uh, uh, in this uh, newspaper in New Russia, the Nikins uh, newspaper, uh, Belecki really um, uh, tried to develop old uh, line of uh, um, art for art's sake um, aesthetics, uh, uh, but the next stage of Belecki evolution uh, was uh, not 
so coherent uh, in uh, maintenance of this uh, old <coughs> tradition. And uh, his main uh, feature uh, and the main thesis of Belecki uh, in uh, uh, Ukrainization period and in aftermath uh, uh, was uh, stress to uh, synthesis uh, and the stress to um, comparative uh, poetics, uh, maybe in tradition of Alexander and Alexei Veselovsky. And also Bilecki referred to uh, Veselovsky brothers uh, in his um, uh, late work. Um, Bilecki uh, uh, was a pupil of uh, Kharkiv uh, philologist uh, uh, of uh, pre Great War period and uh, uh, after the revolution uh, uh, and uh, in period of Ukrainization, he published uh, mostly in Russian uh, his main methodological works, uh, not only uh, well-known uh, uh, works uh, about the reader, uh, but also these uh, three pieces uh, uh, about the general uh, overview of uh, uh, intellectual development of Russian literary scholarship. Uh, it's uh, a little bit similar to uh, Viktor Zhermunsky's position uh, in Petrograd uh, in, uh, with uh, Samopoyas critic, uh, but uh, also in Kharkiv tradition, the uh, maintenance of um, uh, Alexander Potibnya ideas of uh, uh, psychological and uh, um, cognitive uh, aesthetics and uh, poetics. But for me, uh, much more interest uh, uh, problem of Belecki would be not in poor methodological works, uh, but in uh, his uh, real um, works, especially about new and old uh, literature uh, in Ukrainian case for the 20th century, uh, but uh, also uh, with problem of uh, uh, 17th and 18th uh, century for um, all Russian uh, literature. Uh, in uh, Ukrainian literature, uh, he put uh, uh, attention especially to new generation. Uh, uh, Rivals uh, uh, and uh, he uh, look uh, at revolution and uh, new trends uh, uh, in uh, uh, Ukrainian poetry, uh, um, especially in uh, their uh, lays uh, who have not uh, his uh, their own uh, languages uh, before before the revolution and. Uh, it's uh, not so easy to uh, find the uh, um, idea of uh, readers, idea of literary reception in uh, Belecki uh, own works uh, uh, in the 20s and in the 30s in Belecki critic. But maybe these uh, final remarks uh, in his uh, synthesis work, uh, uh, similar to Tanyanov's uh, 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 Belecki's review of new Ukrainian poetry, he put attention especially on this problem of uh, who uh, is the subject of uh, poetry and uh, um, what kind of uh, not only audience, but uh, representation uh, in poetics and aesthetics uh, are obvious in this uh, uh, new trend. And, uh, uh, he put uh, uh, his most uh, similar attention in problem of new and old uh, in some historical mirror. Um, I try uh, to uh, put uh, maybe um, two uh, acute uh, um, ideas that uh, Simon Polotsky would be some kind of uh, self-reference for Belecki himself, but 
uh, when he uh, when we look at uh, Belecki work uh, about Simeon Polotsky uh, in the 1914 1927 in uh, Feshrift to Dmitro Bahali and uh, in uh, the last pieces uh, um, uh, in academic history of Russian literature, uh, we look to three faces of uh, not only Polotsky, but also Beletsky as um, scholar in this three period of uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, intellectual development uh, of the first half uh, uh, of 20th century. And um, uh, when we look uh, uh, to uh, his uh, uh, presentation of uh, Simeon Polotsky works, uh, we see, uh, at for me, uh, very special kinds of uh, reframing, a reframing of context, uh, uh, especially to Moscow audience. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, possible to see in this Beletsky reference to um, a new uh, simplified uh, audience uh, in Russian literature, in uh, Moscow for the second uh, stage of Simeon Polotsky works, uh, some kind of uh, change uh, from uh, Simeon Polotsky uh, first and origin uh, Kievian and uh, uh, Polish Western um, uh, frame and context. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, reintroduction of uh, uh, old uh, European uh, or old uh, academic scholarship uh, in a new context, especially for new audience, um, is interesting for me uh, because uh, uh, I try, it seems to me that it's uh, uh, also history, not only Simeon Polotsky, but um, Alexander Beletsky himself. Because especially in this period between uh, uh, his works of Polotsky or Ukrainian poetry from the 20 years uh, uh, to this academic uh, history of uh, Ukrainian literature, uh, Beletsky tried to uh, prepare a uh, new synthesis, uh, also with some borrowing of example from uh, Soviet and uh, um, official uh, line in, in Marxist uh, literary theory, uh, but also with uh, his uh, own uh, try to synthesis between uh, old and new. And um, in the end of um, uh, his article of Simeon Polotsky uh, in uh, some kind of uh, summary, um, we have uh, also uh, very special uh, ideas how new uh, uh, literary scholars, uh, uh, maybe philological tradition, um, can, the, can change uh, in uh, new intellectual and cultural context uh, of uh, uh, Moscovitz uh, um, kingdom. Uh, also, uh, uh, in uh, in the maybe main in the same year of his Simeon Polotsky work about uh, new and old uh, literary uh, in the beginning of the 18th century, Bilecki also um, put uh, uh, maybe his last. Uh, uh, methodological work about the synthesis in uh, literary science and also uh, put the main attention to idea of poetic cognition. Maybe not uh, so poor aesthetic or ph phenomenological way as in his uh, Kharkiv uh, newspaper uh, article, but uh, try to uh, um, uh, change and uh, reframe the uh, Marxist claim of uh, um, uh, claim of uh, 
kind of um, uh, class uh, approach uh, uh, and the uh, idea of uh, uh, theory of uh, development of um, social reality and uh, uh, literary aesthetic. Uh, he tried to uh, insist uh, on necessity of new audience, uh, new public, uh, not only in 20 years, but also in the 30s. Uh, his uh, uh, literary uh, works, uh, some kind of nonfiction memoir about uh, good old time, uh, put in this uh, um, uh, frame of uh, uh, reconceptualization. We have not um, uh, uh, nostalgia, nostalgia uh, here in Belecki uh, reappropriation of uh, his uh, own intellectual uh, inheritance. Uh, but uh, we can uh, put uh, uh, our uh, scholars' intention now that uh, Belecki claim for new and even claim for synthesis uh, in the end of Sorters. Um, have uh, uh, the uh, context uh, a, a great uh, massacre and purges uh, in um, Ukrainian and Kievan, especially uh, literary scholarship. Uh, there and uh, most uh, neoclassics, uh, Filipovich and uh, another uh, people from Belecki. Uh, circle of 20s uh, was killed. And uh, Belecki, uh, uh, as Yuri Shevelyov put in his memoirs, would be recognized as uh, Ukrainian now, but uh, really uh, Belecki was uh, the target of attacks not only in late 30s, but uh, in previous period. I put only very short uh, um, reference to uh, official and uh, unofficial uh, campaign and accusation against uh, uh, attempts to prepare with Sergei Maslov and Nikolai Gudzi a uh, new uh, outline of uh, Ukrainian literary history um, after Second World War. Uh, here we can see their accusation against uh, 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 Belecki uh, just in period of uh, Dranovism. Uh, so Belecki fate was similar to uh, Grigory Vinokur, uh, Viktor Zhermunsky uh, ideas of synthesis between old and new literary tradition, but the third figure that I mentioned previously was uh, especially Dmitry Chizhevsky, and uh, relation between Chizhevsky and Belecki is uh, special uh, uh, devoted to special understanding and more scrutinized uh, research. I only put in the final of uh, my um, contribution um, uh, give the reference to Yuri Oxman personal letter uh, to Nikolai Gudzi, who knows Belecki from the seminar of Vladimir Peretz of St. Vladimir University uh, 50 years before, from uh, 1911, I suppose. Uh, but um, Oxman put here very um, acid uh, uh, characteristic of uh, late Belecki, uh, after his uh, try to synthesis, but uh, uh, when we think about Belecki in general, we also uh, have to uh, think about also his uh, pupil, uh, not only Yuri Barabash, who survived now uh, in Moscow, uh, in his uh, very uh, bad intellectual career uh, before 1990s, uh, but also in the work of uh, Ivan Zuba and especially Grigory Sivokin, who tried to uh, 
maintain uh, Belecki ideas of uh, uh, reader in literary studies. And this kind of combination of old and new, uh, Potebnian and maybe Peretzian tradition in uh, new Soviet context, uh, uh, for me, devoted uh, uh, special attention in the history, uh, not only Ukrainian uh, literary scholarship, but uh, especially in the history of uh, Ukrainian uh, formalism itself. Thank you so much and sorry for uh, the last uh, much more time uh, than it's necessary. Thank you, Galina. Sorry, Galina. Uh, ah, yeah, okay, I will repeat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, Alexander. I just wanted to say that uh, Bilecki is our ar archive and um, uh, he, is, he is a scholar is uh, much overlooked and missed in contemporary Ukrainian studies. So it's very good that we try to change this situation. I hope more and more uh, presentations and uh, papers will appear. Um, as we agreed, we decided to uh, to make the whole discussion at the end of the fourth presenter. Uh, so, and um, uh, our next speaker is uh, Natalia Kotenko Vusatyuk. Um, she received her uh, PhD at National University of Kiev Mohila Academy. Uh, as for now, as I know, she. Um, she is editing her, her huge PhD thesis, which is uh, uh, almost almost written, and she has to obtain her PhD. Uh, the Department of Literature of National University of Kiev, Mahila, and all of us we are waiting for it. Uh, yeah, her PhD thesis title is "The Literary Critical Discourse of Kiev Neoclassicist," mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Natalia is um, famous uh, of her. Uh, articles of all, on uh, Ukrainian uh, neoclass neoclassicists, and probably all of us we know the anthology Kiev and Neoclassicist Kievsky Neoclassiki, which were, were, was published in two, 2015 in the publishing house Smolaskip. And uh, Natalia uh, was uh, an editor of this book, and also she wrote a um, uh, um, uh, foreword to this book. Uh, so today, Natalia uh, presenting um, make, make, makes a presentation on Boris Yakubsky's concept of literary form and the methods of uh, literary analysis. Uh, Natalia, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me know if you can see my presentation. Can I share? I can't share. I don't know why. Oh. Uh, could you see my? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, the theme of my speech today is Boris Yakupsi concept of literary form and uh, the methods of literary analysis. Mm -hmm. Bruce Yakupsky was an outstanding Ukrainian many contradictions as well as Natalia, there are a lot of interruptions. Um, All right. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the internet connection is not stable. Um, mm, I don't know. Do, do you sit near Wi-Fi? <laughs> I'm sorry for that question. <laughs> because we hear mm -hmm. like the second, third word, uh, word you, you pronounced. And now? Yeah, the same. The same? Maybe you put your, your camera, Natalia, like you put it oh, off, yeah. at least. Maybe you try like this. Oh, what should I do? What you uh, no camera. Uh, so, so we hear you and we see your presentation um, and your camera. Uh, so maybe it will be better connection. 
Switch off your camera. Switch off. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, where is it? Uh, how should I do it? <laughs> I did it actually, and I think now it's better. Just try to speak, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Boris Sikupski, do you hear me? No? Yeah, yeah, just, just try to speak longer, just we will mm -hmm. understand if there are some interruptions or not. Uh, Boris Sikupski was um, held at home with ancient Greeks as, uh, and with Opoyas, like one his students said. In the 1920s, 1930s, he was a vice rector of Kiev Institute of People's Education, former Kiev University, and the dean of the Department of Philology. He fought on the front of the First World War as a lieutenant. During the Second World War, he stayed in occupied Kiev and collaborated with the new Ukrainian world newspaper, supported by Nazi authorities. In 1944, with the return of Soviet authorities, he was arrested by NKVD and died of a heart disease in prison. Nkopsky was a researcher of Heine, uh, Heine, Heine Lisa Ukrinka, Olha and the of the still the age of Russian prison, namely Mikhail Semenko. He was the editor of the first academic, almost complete works by Lesya Ukrainka. Boris Sikup's apartment in the house on Turgenevska Street near Sydney Market. You can see the photo of this house on the slide. Uh, was a meeting place of modern writers and artists in Kiev, among them Kiev uh, neoclassicists. Neo uh, Yakubsky, Yakubsky collected a huge home library with rare volumes. Uh, where is his library and where is his archive now? Only some Yakubsky papers, mostly letters and autobiographical materials were kept in Kiev and Moscow state archives. According to Yakubsky's wife, Sofia, he was kicked out of their flat by Germans in winter 1943. And what happened with the, his library then is a good question. It's known that some books were sold to cave collectors after Yakubsky's death. Among them, the volume on poetry by Osip Mandelstam with uh, Mandelstam's inscription. It was, uh, this book was resold several times. Even now, the traces of Yakubsky's library can be seen on the rare bookstore auctions in Moscow. For example, a collection of poetry by Vladimir Solovyov with Yakubsky's and Bloch's inscriptions. The leader of the group called him vice aristocrat, biologist, and esteem. But also, he called him Pesce the deafest uh, because of his thinness. Uh, uh, last uh, two okay. minutes, uh, probably not so good. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Because I don't see. Uh, sorry, I don't see. Yeah, before it was okay, but uh, but now uh -huh. probably more. More no than, uh, than yes. Uh, the relationship between was in the second half of the 1920s when Yakubsky published a smashing review of Maxim Rilsky's new collection of poetry entitled Not in the Rhythm with an Epoch. Retrograde romanticism and non modernity of his colleague. In 1945, he published a harsh article. I'm sorry. Kukski published a harsh notes about the past and future of the university in Moscow General, the front of science and technique. He exposed class enemy, academicians, and blamed Professor Polozero, who had been already arrested for revolutionary Ukrainian nationalism. 
perfect. The conflict with Kiev was also caused by his participation in opposed to Nazis uh, literary organizations. In 1927, Yakutsky became a member of the All Ukrainian Union of Proletarian Writers. He started publishing his theoretical and critical articles in journal Heart. Related to literary theory. He taught courses on rhythmics and metrics, poetics at Kiev Institute of People's Education, Mikola Lysenko High Institute of Music and Drama, Knat Mikhailichenko Theatre Studio, and Institute of Archaeology. The section of sociology of literature at the Literature and Linguistic Seminar of High Type at Kiev University was supervised by him. Yakubsky gave a course of Marxist methodology of the history of literature within the seminar. On the slide, you can see on theory of literature and some on history of literature in theoretical reflections. His first important paper was Master Thesis, wrote under the supervision of Andriy Loboda, the evolution of verse in the new Russian literature. Although he wasn't able to complete Thesis because of the beginning of the First World War, it was honored with the silver medal at the university. Two monographs, Science of Versification and the Sociological Method in Literature, brought Yakubsky a glory of a prominent theorist. In 1940, he published a manual for teachers on the secondary school of the secondary school entitled Elements of the Also, he conceptualized the method of social realism in the monograph. Lenin, Lunacharsky, Wilhelm Dibelius, and Viktor Zhermunsky coexisted peacefully in his bibliography. As you see on the slide, uh, the peak of Yakubsky's activities fell on the years 1927-1928. However, his article of the time in periodicals can be hardly classified as theoretical. The proper notion could be publicistic literary theory. Yakubsky was a very He had the highest regard for the sociology of literary taste by Shukin, the Russian edition of which he reviewed. He had wanted to publish his research in Ukrainian translation much earlier, but couldn't find publishers. Yakubsky believed Shukin's concept to be a rich source for creating Ukrainian sociological method. Moreover, he convinced that formalist approach was of German origin. He was fond of German history of genres, history of art without names. Yakovsky talked about complete dependence of Russian formalists on European science and secondaries of Russian theories. Nevertheless, he referred to these Russian theoretical papers, only some of them, both of formalist and Marxist kind. For example, he reviewed issue of literary evolution by Yuri Tinyanov and sociology of literature by Nikolai Yefimov. Polish, Polish formalism, in contrast to Russian or German, went almost unnoticed by Yakubsky. Although through Korak's mediation, he was aware of Stanislav Ignatievich's theory of the pure form, he denied it as pure metaphysics. And the theory of Julius Kleiner seemed like an interesting explanation of the unity of content and form in the piece of art to him. Uh, in Ukrainian literary criticism, Yakubsky reviewed the nature of short story by Krihori Maifet, ways of Marxist literary criticism by Anatoly Mashkin, and Marxist method in literary criticism by Pablo Petrenko. Yakubsky defined notions of 
architecture, artistic design of work, and partly style were synonyms for him. Form was a very capacious notion for Yakubsky. Critical form consists of elements, rhythm, meter, euphonia, and strophics. The formal analysis also includes consideration of semasiology, syntax, rhetoric, composition, and genre. And what is content? Content, content is a stuff taken by writers from life, produced by social environment, psychology of epoch and class, and so economic relations. Boris Yakubsky emphasized the inseparability of form and content, but acknowledged a methodological problem. Literary science didn't have tools to analyze form and content as a unity. It's interesting that at the end of the 20s, Yakubsky started using the term structure. According to him, structure is an artistic integrity of all components of the work as an ideological phenomenon, indivisible dialectical unity of content and form, social and aesthetic equivalence in literary work. Structure also became the main notion in Yakubsky's Manual for Teachers of the Secondary School, published in 1940. In this manual, Yakubsky defined the task of literary theory to study specific features of the structure of a literary work, its integral construction, form, and technical devices using a certain methodology. For Soviet poetics, it was, of course, so-called Marxist-Leninist methodology. Uh, meanwhile, in the 1920s, Yakubsky talked about formal, formalist, psychological, and stylistic approaches as equivalent. He characterized formal analysis as external, descriptive, and statistical. Yakubsky was adherent of stylometry in some of his articles dedicated to Taras Shevchenko's versification. Stylometry is a mathematical and statistical study of artistic language and style of a literary work. Our principles of theory is not of sociology, but he hadn't been a pure formalist for a long time. He started as a formalist in the uh, ex uh, exemplary work, Science of Versification, in 1922, and in a year he published exemplary research paper on the sociological method. The speed of evolution of Yakubsky's views on literary theory and even on political and cultural life was amazing. He was often blamed for inconsistency and opportune, uh, opportunism by his contemporaries. He was forced to self-critic and retract his own beliefs. Yakubsky made several attempts to describe interrelation between formalism and socialism and to combine both approaches. First, at the beginning of the 1920s, in the atmosphere of relative liberty, when methodological competition was still possible, Yakubsky stated sociological method and formal method as two parallel ways. The first deals with the dynamics of a literary piece, and the second deals with the statics. In the second half of the 1920s, Yakubsky tried to establish a hierarchy of sociological and formal approaches, and he managed to combine several old approaches under the guidance of the old, under the guidance of a new sociological method. Terminologically, he distinguished between approach and method. Approach was a device of narrow analysis of a single problem, and method was a sum of devices united with an ideological principle. So, sociological method became an umbrella notion term covering all well known approaches described by Vladimir Paris formal, biological, psychobiographical cultural, historical, and comparative. Yakubsky didn't include ethical, publicistic, historical, political, and some other modes from Paris classification. 
In this scheme, formal analysis became a preparatory stage for sociological synthesis. It should be said that uh, Yakubsky reflected a lot on the terminology. What is right? Formal or morphological method? What is right? Marx method or Marxist method? The second variant was more acceptable for him. He used sociological method and Marxist method as synonyms and emphasized that Marxist methodolo methodology was in the process of formation. That's why it used the achievements of all theoretical schools. I like the met metaphor used by um, Etano Kovalenko uh, to describe a transformation of Yakubsky's views. She said it was the invasion of sociologism in the field of functioning of formalism. As a result, the interaction of formalism and sociologism became hierarchical. And it's interesting that according to Yakubsky, not only content, but also form is socially determinated. Plot, genres, literary influences, literary movements, literary evolutions, everything is in general a social cost. Social analysis should be applied to all the elements of literary work and literary process. But unfortunately, he didn't demonstrate, didn't show how to implement that his statement, uh, theoretical statement in practice, except one unconvincing investigation on Shevchenko's sociology of epithets. In his third attempt to clarify interaction between formalism and sociologism, Yakubsky will, uh, appealed to a very popular Georgi Plekhanov scheme of two-step literary analysis. But he made an important remark. It doesn't matter at all which step should be the first. Yakubsky's heavily critical between formalism and Marxism. For example, Samilo, uh, also Marxist critic, Samilo criticized his book, uh, Marxist critic Yakubsky's view on the order of analyzing a literary work, which contradicted Plekhanov's formula of two acts. Marxist critic Felix Yakubovsky called Yakubsky's uh, called Yakubsky eclectic and four sorts. A new term for sources for, was created for his theory, which means eclectic combination of formalism and sociologism with a derogative connotation. Mikhail Mohilansky called Yakubsky's approach a primitive Marxism, um, castration of the complicated social social artistic phenomena. Yakubsky simplified causal interrelations between basis and superstructure, between economy and literature. Dmitro Zahu called Yakubsky's method a kind of hard, sociological method, a kind of hard-heartedness. He argued that Yakubsky didn't manage to apply sociological anal analysis in practice, and really, there were very few pieces where Kupski kept to the whole procedure of sociological analysis. Such a rare example could be his article about the novel Hibare Vuj Vole Jak Jaslapovni by Panas Mirny. And uh, at last, you can see, mm, I'll tell you about one more uh, Kupski criticist. It was Professor, the PhD student of Kiev University and personal enemy of Yakubsky, Professor appealed to him in the devastating article in the literary newspaper in 1935. I'll quote Professor, you have poorly elaborated the issue of style. It is filled with anti Soviet poison. And I am coming now to my conclusions. If we compare Yakubsky's text, we find a lot of contradictions in his eclectic theory. Yakubsky often contradicted himself. For instance, 
On one hand, he insisted on unity of form and content of a literary work. On the other hand, he asserted that there were periods when the content fell behind the form in futurism, or on the contrary, when the content got ahead of the form in proletarian literature. The dualism of form and content remained an insurmountable problem for Yakubsky. On one hand, Yakubsky denied imminent laws of literary evolution and argued that literary evolution replicated the social evolution. On the other hand, he stated that uh, history of literature was a history of literary styles. And despite all the contradictions, uh, Jakubski made an interesting experiment combining two antagonistic approaches. And moreover, he expressed a paradoxical idea. Formalism lost out, but literary form was rehabilitated. Thank you so much for your attention. And uh, sorry for the problem with connection. I hear now a lot of planes and we have Alan. <laughs> Maybe it's it's um, the reason for such a bad internet connection. I don't know. Sorry. Thank you, Natalia. It's okay. We all understand. It's just a small remark. Natalia is there uh, near Kiev uh, right now. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it explains her uh, not stability of her internet connection. And actually, she's a hero to uh, to have uh, time to join us uh, in our discussion. So thank you, Natalia. Uh, just a very brief comment, not to forget. Uh, actually, I was thinking about that. Um, uh, Jakubski's Marxism was already criticized in uh, 1924 in a Happy Shamrai's article on Potibnya, yeah? uh, when he wrote that uh, that is a good attempt to combine these two approaches, but uh, Jakubski lacks uh, the uh, uh, good understanding of Marxism, something like this. Yeah, so these are. Uh, critics, you showed they were of, of like later of late uh, 1920s, but I, uh, I hope we will have time to discuss it. Um, so we are uh, continue our panel, and uh, now um, I would like to introduce uh, Andrei Ustinov, uh, who received his doctorate degree in Slavic studies and comparative literatures from Stanford University. He is a fellow at the Center for Open Studies in San Francisco. Andre specializes in literary history and comparative cultural studies. His publications include a history of Russian literary avant-garde in Paris, written together with Leonid Livak, uh, collected works of Yuri Adarchenko, and numerous essays on the transnational history of formalism and its main protagonists, Viktor Shklovsky, Boris Eichenbaum, and Roman Jakobson. Uh, today, uh, Andre will present uh, um, uh, a paper on another prominent uh, Ukrainian uh, literary critique, uh, uh, Jeremia Eisenstock. So, Andre, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers of this conference. In such challenging times, I'm honored to have an opportunity to praise the centenary of Ukrainian formalism. Also, uh, my talk is based on an essay we have written together with Galina Babak, which in turn grew out of our mutual research on its subject. And since that was a collaborative effort, please feel free to address your comments or questions to Galina as well. Uh, I hope you can see the picture of Eisenstock on the screen, right or not? Yeah, yeah, we see it. Okay, so uh, the credit here goes to Oksana Pashko, who found this photo. Um, in his noteworthy review, The Formal Method in Literature, published in the Kharkiv magazine, Chervoni Shlak, on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of that critical approach, the philologist Ahaki Shamrai offered a starting point for the adoption of formalist ideas in Ukrainian literary studies. Recently, ever since the publications of the Society for the Study of Poetic Language, or APAYAS, he stated, specifically after the appearance of the Poetics Collection in 1919, everywhere, even in cozy and provincial nooks, far from the central cities, 
circles of formalists started to pop up. Fashionable questions about style, rhythm, and meter began to be discussed and argued about. Several new terms appeared in the everyday speech of any intellectual. The terms which were previously an inalienable property of textbooks on the theory of literature, the ones which never existed outside the university halls. The most effective force in mastering the formal method in Ukraine emerged at the turn of this decade, at the very beginning of the 1920s, in the form of the Kharkiv Historical and Literary Circle, to which Shamrai himself belonged. That Ukrainian answer to Petrograd's Apayas was established by Alexander Bilecki, professor of the former University of Kharkiv, then renamed Hino, Kharkiv Institute of Public, of Public Education. In his 1964 autobiography, Bilecki told the story of how the Society for the Study of Literary History came into being. From 1917 to 1922, I stayed constantly in Kharkiv. Finally, in 1922, after a long break, I went to Moscow and Petrograd. As a result of that trip, 1923 became a year of my personal literary revival. Having been brought up at the university in an atmosphere saturated with Alexander Potemkin's influence, I was never a Potemkin, just as I was not a formalist. Actually, I argued with the formalists. For example, in the article, The Newest Trends in Russian Sciences of Literature. Since the 1920s, a group of young people, graduate students and researchers from the Department of the History of European Culture, has formed around me. Its literary section was then transformed into the Department of Literary Studies, which was later merged into the Taras Shevchenko Institute. At the center of our joint research were questions of poetics, developed on the basis of Western, Russian, and Ukrainian literature. Among active participants of the Kharkiv Historical and Literary Circle, Bilecki named Yeremi Eisenstock, then a graduate student, and later the secretary of the Department of Literary Studies. In December 1921, recalled Eisenstock, I graduated from the university, then called Hino. However, we still graduated in accordance with the old Kharkiv University programs. At the beginning of 1922, I was enrolled in the Graduate School of a newly created Department of European Culture in the section of literary history headed by Alexander Bilecki. In the same autobiography, Eisenstock paid tribute to his teacher. The interactions with Bilecki had the biggest influence on me. He personally directed our mine and my peers, methodological searches. He instilled in me an interest in historical and literary investigations, archival in particular. Because of Bilecki, Eisenstock learned about the activities of the Petrograd Society for the Study of Poetic Language, Apayas. When we met at the end of 1916, he wrote about Bilecki. He answered my question, how to work, by recommending the first two Apayas collections on the theory of poetic language. That pertinent advice most likely dated back to the early 1920s, when Bilecki concentrated the work of his theoretical postgraduate seminar on the study of questions of literary methodology. Having chosen the formal method as the main theoretical framework for his own research, Eisenstock, who was actually related to Viktor Shklovsky, became the leading proponent of Apayas concepts within the Kharkiv circle of formalists as he retitled the Society of Young Ukrainian Literary Scholars. It is probably no coincidence that the earliest evidence of his interaction with Apayas dates back to 1919, the year that was designated by Ahati Shamrai as a starting point of the expansion of the formalist set of ideas. In Eisenstock archives, we have discovered a wonderful note Uh, dates of May 1919 from Vladimir Shklovsky, not Viktor, Vladimir Shklovsky. And we are most grateful to Bogdan Zimbal for sharing this document with us. What is significant here is that the other Shklovsky addresses Eisenstock as a colleague and not just a younger, distant relation. Dear colleague, he wrote, 
Kolega, I would like to give lectures in Kharkiv on Western literature, mainly on the 19th century novel. Western European literature and languages are my specialty. For example, on the topic, the woman in the French novel. Or you can announce the full cycle of lectures on the Western novel. In addition, I lecture in Petrograd on a new science called bibliology and dedicated to the studies of book, книжное дело, in the broadest sense of the word. Vladimir Shklovsky. And then adds in the postscriptum. I'm guessing I can come in June. I would like to have posters printed only after I am able to leave Petrograd. Just like his brother Viktor, Vladimir Shklovsky took a very active part in the OPAS literary initiatives. He published in both collections on the theory of poetic language. Translations from Maurice Gramont and Christopher Mirab appeared in the first collection. His article on the phonetic experiments of Edward Sievers, whose research at that time showed great interest in connection with the study and recording of sounding speech in the second installment. According to rumors, notice Larisa Stepanova, the elder Shklovsky was the most well-read in Western literature. We don't hear, or it's only me. No, we all we all don't hear him anymore. Okay, I will call him. <clears throat> We lost him, we lost connection to Andrea, I guess. He's not in the room anymore. Andrei? I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. <laughs> what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> uh, you talked uh, about uh, uh, the plot of Vladimir Shklovsky, like the next four sentences. As we know, uh, Vladimir Shklovsky, after you finished uh, to uh, describe the letter of Vladimir Shklovsky, you, okay. you talked like one minute more and then we stopped to hear you. So I'll, I'll, I'll go again. Okay. According to rumors, notice Larissa Stepanova, the elder Shklovsky was the most well read in Western literature on linguistics and poetics among the formalists. As per memoirs of Viktor Shklovsky's last literary secretary, Alexander Galushkin, the family placed their hopes with Vladimir and their father, Boris Vladimirovich Shklovsky, trusted Vladimir to become a real scholar with a great future. They say he was incredibly surprised when he found out that the younger son, Viktor, actually founded a literary school that had a very strange name, a formal school. We may assume that right then, at the turn of the 1920s, Eisenstock tried to build a relationship with the Payas, relying first and foremost on the assistance of Shklovsky brothers. Dear Jura, Viktor Shklovsky wrote to Eisenstock no later than early September 1920. I'm waiting for you. Igor Grabai's art history has been ordered for Eric. I still could not go to the infirmary for lack of time. Uh, let me try to... Presentation, yeah. <clears throat> is it showing? Okay, here it is. I haven't settled down yet. Lucy, Shklovsky's wife at the time, sends her regards. Eisenstock plans, however, were thwarted by unfavorable circumstances of 1922. First, Viktor Shklovsky's flight from Petrograd and crossing the ice into Finland. Second, Vladimir Shklovsky's arrest 
and incarceration in Solovki. Eisenstock did not dare then to approach other members of Opayas, and his efforts to develop scholarly contacts were postponed until the publication of the Index of Literature on Poetics, which came out in Kharkiv in 1923 and contained a fairly representative list of works on methodology, poetics, and theory of modern literary movements, published in Russia between 1900 and 1922, and also including translations of European authors. That substantial bibliography, compiled by Zinstock together with another member of the Kharkiv Historical and Literary Circle, Isaac Kaganov, was published as an appendix to the translation of poetics by Richard Müller Freienfels. In addition, the index was issued as a separate brochure in the amount of 150 copies. Sending that particular edition to Osibrik in the spring of 1923, Eisenstock undertook another attempt to establish relations with the Payas, but now with its Moscow chapter. The Index of Literature on Poetics was accompanied with a letter written on behalf of the Kharkiv Circle of Formalists. Our index is printed only in the excerpts, wrote Eisenstock. Only the most essential are included. At the present time, we are preparing the next more complete edition in which we intend to include earlier literature on the subject before 1900. It would have been desirable to receive some bibliographic data from you and your circle. In particular, I ask you to inform us about your articles published in various newspapers and magazines during the revolution. Could you find it possible to actually send us some of these articles? For example, we're extremely interested in your paper on rhythmic and syntactic figures which Eichenbaum and Zermunsky refer to in their monographs. Is it possible somehow to get acquainted with that text? Finally, one more request addressed to your circle, meaning Moscow Linguistic Circle. We would be very interested in information about the papers presented, about collective works, as well as personal work of individual members, and finally about your publications. In exchange, we will be happy to furnish you with information about our work in the Kharkov Circle of Formalists. Based on this appeal to Brick, we can guess the content of a similar letter that Eisenstock sent to the Petrograd Apayas. Rather than addressing it to Viktor Shklovsky, who was still in exile in Berlin, he wrote to Viktor Zermunsky, undoubtedly on Bilecki's recommendation as his mentor was friends with Zermunsky since their student years at St. Petersburg University. Moreover, in his interest towards the Western theoretical approaches, Bilecki turned out to be closer to Zermunsky than to any other member of Apayas. In his 1964 autobiography, Bilecki recalled that he respected Western European, mainly German and French, theoretical research related to literature and psychology. As he stated, I studied it and encouraged my listeners to get acquainted with it. His frank preference for heavy Western type writings of Zermunsky, or should I say German type, that required, to quote Bilecki, highly concentrated attention and deep reflection in many parts, can be recognized in his preface. A few words about the scientific developments of poetics in Russia and in the West written specifically for the Kharkiv edition of Müller Freienfeld's book. It is no coincidence that Bilecki's first response to the works of Russian formalism was devoted to Zermunsky's monograph, Composition of Lyric Poems, published under the auspices of Apayas in 1921. In his review that appeared in the Kharkiv pedagogical journal, Paths of Enlightenment, Bilecki stipulated the need to expose psychological components of poetics as a scientific discipline, especially in his discussion regarding strophic compositions. It still remains a question whether the stanza could be considered a truly compositional unit, wrote, German, uh, wrote Bilecki, on Zermunsky, <laughs> insofar as it could be seen as the true root from which stem the architectonics of a lyrical play. It is very possible that the composition itself stems not from what is given outside of it, but from something inherently internal. 
Perhaps it embraces the symbolic parallelism of images, a metaphor, a metonymy, a gradation and antithesis of feelings and emotions. That is what can determine the external composition altogether. We cannot help but notice that in his preface to the Kharkiv edition of Poetics, Belecki significantly cools off his initial enthusiasm towards the formal method. However, he pays a tribute to the literary scholarship and theoretical achievements of the formalists, although not without some lukewarm notes. A great and partly deserved success fell before our eyes uh, to the lot of the St. Petersburg Society of Scholars of the Poetic Language known as Apayas, who set to revolutionize the old ideas about form and content in artistic creativity, and then lay the foundation for the building of a new literary science, that science which, despite the merits of a number of prominent scholars, had really had a hard time to take root here in Russia. Together with his students, Bilecki then dedicated his efforts to the creation of a synthetic method of studying literature and turned his disciples' attention to the problem of the reader, treating it as the main factor of the literary evolution. 1923 was a year of special literary revival for me, he admitted in his autobiography. My essay in the studio of the word artist was published, as well as my article, Turgenev and Russian Writers of the 1830s and 1860s, uh, from of the 1830s through 1860s. I also edited Russian translation of Müller Freienfeld's Poetics and managed to write a number of other articles. Of those, in the studio of the word artist aroused interest of critics and readers. It also serves as a document that characterizes in full my theoretical outlook of the 1920s. This essay dedicated to the theory of reading and the history of the reader served as the turning point in the trajectory of the Kharkiv circle of formalists. The change of its direction was also marked in its title as Oksana Pashko has discovered, instead of being historical and literary, the Kharkiv circle was now called methodological. As Bilecki recognized in his autobiography, by 1926, the members of the circle prepared a special group of reports related to the history of the reader, the problem of the reader as a factor in individual writing and as a part of the general literary process. Um, Sorry, the problem of the reader as a factor in individual writing and as a part of the general literary process continues to interest me to this day. And I consider its resolution absolutely necessary for building a literary science. Finding himself at the crossroads and not really appreciating that methodological turn, Eisenstock switched the focus of his research to the history of Ukrainian literature. Again, he was grateful for his mentors and other important suggestions. On his advice, Eisenstock wrote about Bilecki, I set about the detailed description of the manuscripts kept in the library of Kharkov University and immediately discovered the unknown manuscripts of Katlerevsky, Kvitka, Shevchenko, Sherbina, and others. To a large extent, these discoveries define the subject and nature of my scholarly interests for many years to come. Subsequently, he spoke about the Kharkiv circle of formalists rather sparingly. In my postgraduate years, 1922-1925, wrote Eisenstock in his autobiography, I dealt with methodological issues that united all members of our department. However, I paid the most attention to the study of Ukrainian literature often appearing in magazines and newspapers with articles and reviews as a historian of literature and as a literary critic. Yet, in his works on literary history, Eisenstock consist consistently and steadfastly used the framework of the formal method and operated with surgical precision using the Opoyas instrumentarium. But his literary matter, his material, was now the complex core of Ukrainian literature. On September 7, 1928, Viktor Shklovsky wrote to Eisenstock, 
The question of the relationship between Ukrainian and Russian literature is very serious and completely untouched. It would be good to look deep into it without boasting and irritation. What are you doing about Shevchenko? Are you going to study literary theory and such and so on? We do not know what was Eisenstock's response to his cousin. However, his biography gives us a sort answer. Eisenstock never wrote on any methodological issues or literary theory. He dedicated his life to studying and raising awareness of Ukrainian poetry and Ukrainian literary culture, especially Taras Shevchenko. Thank you. Valina, we don't hear you. I'm sorry. Today is the day of. Uh, so uh, thank you, Andre, for your presentation. Um, I just wanted to know that uh, the full version of uh, the article could be found in the next issue of Weiner Slavistisches Jahrbuch. Uh, so it was um, prepared for this publication. Um, and now we proceed and I want to introduce our uh, next speaker, uh, Oksana Poshko, uh, who received her uh, PhD uh, in comparative literature in uh, um, Shevchenko National University. Uh, as for now, she is an associate professor at National University of Kiev Mahila Academy. Uh, and also, uh, she is an invited fellow at the University of Viadrina, Frankfurt Order, and she is engaged in the project, the European Times Research Project. Uh, her research interests are um, the comparative studies and the history of Ukrainian literary criticism of the 1920s. Uh, today, Oksana will present um, a paper on the theory of short story in Rihori Maifet's work of the 1920s. You're welcome. Aksana, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Hi. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for uh, for, uh, for invitation me on this uh, very interesting conference, and uh, I try to present um, uh, my uh, uh, my talk, which uh, named the theory of short story in Rewarding Myfet's works of the. 1920s and uh, do uh, is it um, uh, is it okay uh, is it all okay with presentation yes uh, yes yeah yeah everything is good uh, theoretical works of uh, Grigory Maifet uh, about the short story um, were mostly written of the 1920s Maifit published several articles about this uh, theme in Ukrainian literary, uh, literary journals, and then the researcher collected them in the two volumes book, The Nature of Short Story, Priroda Novelle, I can show it to this, uh, this book, uh, in 1928, 1929, and Maifit announced the third issue, but it was not realized. Uh, still, the situation in Ukrainian literary criticism gets worse. Uh, the ideological censorship uh, re restrictions intensified. And in 1930, uh, 1934, in Poltava, Maifet was arrested. So on the slides of the presentation, I try to show not only the quotation and the main thesis of, the, of my talk, but also photos of Maifet in the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, I would like to uh, note that early images have not been found yet. And let me also sometimes present on the slides small pieces of Maifet's letters to Petro Rotoc, Poltava's local historian. This information is not directly related to the report, but uh, because materials about Maifet are now available only in the archives, I think it is important to present his work in this way. 
So the archive of Mafet is uh, partially preserved in the Central Archive Museum of Literature and Art of Ukrainian Kyiv, of Ukraine Kyiv. But in it, we can find only one uh, theoretical uh, work, Poetics, po po Poetica, which is date 1940. Uh, it is a small book uh, with a homemade cover uh, where we can notice about NKVD on the cover. The inscription uh, indicates that Mafet uh, either used drafts for the self-made book or the mention of NKVD on the cover to prevent excluding the book during the citrus. I would like to note that the researcher's archive has been partly preserved. The vast library, the manuscripts by Mafet were first confiscated in 1934, immediately after his arrest. Then during um, the sieges, uh, uh, the scientist's archive was confiscated several times. Uh, let me briefly recall the main dates of May Mayfred's life. I use the here CV for the Writers' Union of Ukraine in 1965. This biographical information, information shows us that Mayfred worked as a literary critic for only six years from 1928 to uh, 1934. It should be noted that Mayfit had two high educations, mathematics and philology. It is important to point this out to characterize the specifics of his literary approach because he probably used mathematical models to analyze the short story. Uh, we can see uh, about uh, his, um, uh, which language he, uh, he knew, uh, uh, English, French, German, uh, etc. So he was the teacher of uh, German and uh, Russian and Ukrainian language. Uh, and uh, uh, his uh, job after, the, uh, after uh, he was arrested, uh, uh, is only as an economist engineer, uh, and uh, he uh, never uh, returned to the uh, literary to, um, uh, to the university or uh, to the, uh, the science. Uh, so uh, he uh, was um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, and. Uh, the end of his life is very uh, tragic. Uh, on September 1975, he uh, committed suicide in Pechora, Komi Republic, Russia. After his first arrest, he had no opportunity to return to his native Poltava, and he had no opportunity uh, to return uh, to his uh, scientific work. Uh, so, uh, Mayfitz, Mayfitz's uh, scientific uh, interest in the 1920s and 1930s included various issues. Uh, diversification, the theory of music, the problem of synesthesia, reflexology, Miroslav Serchan literary works, the theory of the novel and translation studies, but the theory of short story remained central. Mayfit tried to republish the book Nature of the Short Story, Priroda Novelle, in the 1960s, but without success. The publishing house Dnipro received one negative review of the book and cancelled the project. Such a preamble was necessary to remind the main dates of Mayfit's view and show the framework work for reconstructing his theory of the short story. So for it, we have only the published works of 1920s, only published. When we talk about a short story, a terminological question arises. Are the terms short story and novella the same? Modern literary critics describe the specific traditions of each literature. The term novella is more common for Italian literature, but the short story for American literature. In the Ukrainian language, there are two words to describe two different genres, novella and opovedanie. Traditionally, a novella is characterized by an expected ending, intrigue, and less volume. But Mayfit used uh, the term short story, adopted from American literature criticism, and novella as synonyms. 
there is another important question. Can we explain the interest in of the short stories poetics only as a personal scientific preferences? For response on this question, first of all, we have the mention the genres features of the short story. Its essential component is the presence of uh, climax in the terminology uh, is, um, in the terminology of American literary criticism. So a priori, the short story should be interesting to the reader. So the one of the important category for the theory of short story is the category reader. Secondly, the theme, uh, the poet, sorry, uh -huh. uh, secondly, the theme, uh, the poetics of short stories, uh, was worked out by Moffat when he was a graduate student in the Department of Literary Studies of Kharkiv University in 1920s. It should uh, underline that the studying of the reader was there. Um, uh, was the one of the central scientific themes of this department. Thirdly, it is no co uh, coincidence that Myfit analyzes so many popular Amer um, American textbooks on how to write a short story. He emphasizes on the commercial orientation of American short stories very often. And in my opinion, Myfit's attention to the commercializations of American short stories, we can be interpreted as the important themes for this, uh, for uh, these problems and for Ukrainian literary situation of the 1920s. Before considering the main features of uh, my fifth theory of the short story, uh, let me describe the genre of uh, his literary research. Each volume consists, maybe I, uh, hold on. Each volume consists two parts. The first part is an, an, an analysis of the theoretical works of literary critics, which includes several essays. The second part is a study of literary works, mostly short stories by Ukrainian authors of the 1920s. These are Yuri Yanovsky, Arkady Lubchenko, Geosh Kurupi, Yakiv Kachura, Vasil Menko, Gordy Kotsuba, Alexis Lisarenko, Alexei Kunzich, Ivan Meketenko, Yevgen Tlužnik, Valerian Fedmogilny, Volodymyr Yaroshenko, Andrei Kloche, Yuri Zhilko. Iman Forein also working uh, in the genre uh, of short stories, Maifet explores the works of Artur Schnitzler, Stefan Zweig, Joseph Conrad, and Stacey Omonier. I, listened, uh, I listed so many writers' names and showed a lot of the photos. It's um, maybe uh, it's um, photos uh, of um, writers uh, which uh, short stories uh, my fit, uh, um, analyzed. Um, because uh, um, uh, to, uh, to emphasize that the context of the Ukrainian short story of 1920s in the book of my fit is presented very widely. So uh, now I try to analyze the main aspects of the theory of uh, short story by Myford. The researcher uh, defines the purpose of his studies in this way, quotation, laboratory, laboratory critical way to improve the quality of literary products. The first consequence of this aim is the restructuring of abstract theoretical elements. Thus, the author imagines that his book's readers uh, is the literary critics, the readers who are interested in literature, and the novice writers. So in my first book, uh, we can find a lot of, uh, uh, we can't find a lot of terminology and definitions, but try to describe the most important of them. According to Myfet, the work is the literary work is a function complex of elements of external and internal forms. These words can probably be interpreted in such way. It is important to study both the technical features of the literary work and the characteristics of the style. I want uh, to point that Myfet does not say about the analysis but about reading and rereading. Myfet formulates his method of interpretation as slow reading. Now we call it close reading. Here he appeals to the methodology of Mikhail Gershenzov. Quote, the method of reading 
uh, and li uh, the literary work includes the uh, immediacy of perception and the subjectivity of his immediacy. So Maifid does not deny the importance of subjectivity in reading and rereading the literary work. Even in the case of the super reader, it ideal, ideal reader that the literary critic is. Perhaps this interpretation references Potivnia's idea, uh, idea that the sense of the literary work is produced in new reading. Uh, Maifid always explores the work uh, Imminent, he speaks about formal characteristics of the features of the theme and structure of the short story. Uh, naturally, uh, in defining the term prium, Maifit refers, for example, to the Shklovsky works. Quote, is it possible to be satisfied in art creativity only with the knowledge of techniques? Rhetorically asks Maifit and answers. It leads either to juggling techniques stern or to the Lauren Stern or to the impersonal perfection that resembles hairdress mannequins and French popular novels or American short stories. Interesting, but Maifet correlates the term prium both with the games elements of arts uh, in the arts and the commercial art. In the polemic with Shklovsky, Maifet formulates his vision of the literary work. Uh, I quote again, uh, every artist comes to the composition in the process of realizing his task. It is useless to pose the question of the consciousness of tricks by such authors as Shklovsky and unconscious composition of Mopassan. This question must, must be reformulated. The first comes from this artificial composition scheme. The second comes to the composition to realize their artistic task. Which uh, definition of the form Maifert proposed? He speaks about the functional subordination of the elements of the form to the stylistic dominance of the literary work. I repeat it in Ukrainian. Funktionalna pidlehlist elementi forma stylistichnim dominantam tvoru. He notes about the importance of the artistic task over the form. The task of the writer is an argument that originally de determines the function, the form. Umovnist anatomichnoho operovania živim hudožnim materialom. Примат художнього завдання над формою. Завдання митця то є аргумент, що органічно обумовлює функцію, форму. Thus the task of the uh, writer uh, or style uh, determines the form. On the theory of uh, Maifet's short story correlated with the books by American writers, critics and professor of literature at the University of Arizona, Perry. The names of books we can see on the slide. It is interesting that Maifet notes the similarity of some uh, thesis uh, of uh, Josephine Bridgard and Schengelian, how to write uh, the work, uh, how to write articles, poems, and stories. And the works uh, by Shklovsky, Technika Pisatelskova Remisla. For example, he recalls Shklovsky aphorism to write, one must have a profession and other than literature. And the most important things for a novice writer is to have over an attitude to things. Щоб писати, треба мати іншу професію, крім літератури, та найважливіше для письменника, який починає писати, це мати власне ставлення до речей. Also, Maifet points on an important problem of the theory of American short story, the issue of narration. The third, the first or third persons or they use the diary and letters in the literary work. Analyzing the work of uh, Michel Joseph, uh, Maifert focuses on the problem of definition of the uh, sujet. He, he wrote sujet, I don't know how I can translate exactly, or story or discourse, or maybe the plot. Uh, the story is a complication of episodes connected by the law of causes and consequence. Another literary uh, critic, uh, John Frederick, as Maifet points out, 
insist on the importance of style and rhymed prose. I would like to emphasize that the thesis of rhymed prose was very important for Ukrainian literature because the traditions of rhymed prose were very strong during all 19th centuries from Kvitkos Novyanenka to Markovavchok and Panas Mirne, um, Mirne realistic prose and uh, of course Kasubinsky prose. Uh, but the main part of the Maifet's book is an interpretation of, so, of short stories. It is possible to reconstruct the scheme of analysis which Maifet proposed. First, it reveals the story compositional and stylistic characteristics. Um, he, he tried to, uh, uh, to analyze the number of parts, the story, the method of composition, narrative structure, monologue, dialogue, beginning, the, the, uh, the role of the beginning, uh, the end of the work, the title, the meaning of the title, the features of style, phrase structure, change in the rhyme of stories, etc. Maifet distinguished three parts of the short story, the beginning, the short story itself, and the climax. The essential feature of the short story, according to Maifet, is the climax of Puant. The final climax in the development of the story must be prepared by every step of the short story. Uh, the innovation by Maifet was diagrams for describing the text, some of which you can see on the slide. But he notes that such visualization is limited because the graphs don't fix the reader's perception of the text, don't fix the process of reading. As an example of the close reading of the short story, let's look briefly how Maifet describes the specific of Conrad's short story. Uh, first of all, the science tries to explain popularity of Conrad and proposes uh, the following model of the um, of, of the of his uh, uh, literary work. It is not a circle with the one center, but an ellipse with two focuses, one of which is a background, and the other is something human. Strong correspondence unites both centers and the adventure is used as a bridge between the reader and the psychology, which gives the theme the idea of the work. This adventure is like a reflector whose task is to illuminate the psychological side of Conrad's literary work. This is the essence of his reform of the adventure genre. It seems Conrad invites the reader to create a short story with him. According to Maifet, the reader's interest to Conrad's uh, short story is based on the presence of mystery. Frequently, Conrad used the first, um, uh, first person narrative, uh, the resource and advantage of a slang, uh, in describing Conrad's short story, Maifet moves from the problem of ex external form to style. And often uh, the researcher uh, point the short story by Conrad have an incomplete form, uh, which is um, a similar technique of open perspective. And Maifet notes in Huilevi's short story, for example, Zhitya or Life. How did, uh, sorry, no. uh, how did a professional reader meet uh, uh, Maifet's book? Very well. There were reviews, uh, about five reviews by Boris Yakubsky, Isaac Polsky, Volodymyr Dejavin, two reviews, so maybe three reviews, uh, Felix Yakubovsky. Reviewers noted uh, the, books, uh, double, uh, the book's double focuses theoretical and literary critical issues, as well as a guide to the novice writer. According to Vladimir Dejavin, Maifet's imminent approach is a necessary ground for the future, for the future sociological, and, uh, sociological analysis. Maifet's book was also compared to Johansson, How to Build a Story, Jak Buduitse Opovedania. Critics believed that it was Maifet who represented theoretical issues much more seriously. 
It should be noted uh, noted that Maifert himself emphasized the difference between his approach as a kind of subjective reading and the technical analysis in Johansson's work. Vladimir Derzhavian also stressed the importance of the panorama of the American book market, and he note, uh, noticed the elements of sociological anal analysis of literature in the approach by Maifert, for example, the category of literary taste. However, now Johansson is well represented writer, but Maifet's researchers remain on the margins of the Ukrainian literary criticism and don't attract the attention of science. To sum up, the analysis of Maifet's methodological approaches showed that he focused on, uh, on the imminent reading of the short story. Uh, uh, to, uh, uh, the plot, uh, the compositional structure, uh, and he, uh, he tries uh, to, to explain why the short story is attractive to the reader. And such a focus of, of the issue of readers and the professionalization of writing is relevant for the 1920s in Ukraine. It should be considered in the context of Willowis's thesis on the professionalization of writers, and in my opinion, in gradual commercialization of literary situation in Ukrainian in the 1920s, as the activities of cooperative publishing house, the formation of the Institute of Professional Critics, the emergence uh, of a reader who is interested in uh, the literature and can pay for, for their interest. Oh, sorry, it's a, uh, it's a, it's for them. No, it's a source. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for this uh, wonderful presentation and very important. Um, just a brief remark. Uh, I think uh, it's important to know that Dirjavin and Bilecki were the editors or advisors of the second uh, part of the book, as my uh, say thanks to them, yes, that they have time to read and to make their uh, vulnerable comments. Um, and now we continue um, with our discussion. Uh, so please, uh, you may uh, ask by, uh, by putting your hand or um, writing in the chat. Um, or any other ways. <laughs> um, and actually, I liked yesterday's, uh, um, yeah, Alexander Viol, yeah, I see. Alexander, you're welcome. Um, thank you for these really good talks. I would have a question to Alexander. Uh, that was super interesting for me because um, I worked a lot on Yuri Trinyanov and uh, so about his parody theory and this um, inner literary raws. And so, uh, Alexander, I, I didn't understand. So, uh, how sociological or anti-sociological uh, is Alexander Bilecki, or in Ukraine, Alexander Bilecki? So you said, I, I, he, I think, as I understood you, he's quite in this sociological interpretation. And I would always argue that Tinyanov is in this anti-mimetic, of course. So not Marx, not mirroring the world, but just uh, literature, art, just forming a new kind of world by inner literary raws. And could it, would, would Bilecki be on this side? I didn't understand it. Just uh, if you could elaborate a little bit more on this, because this would be super interesting for me, because I'm not so much expert on Bilecki. And then you mentioned the Promeshutok of Yuri Trinyanov, what I really adore a lot. I worked a lot uh, on uh, Daniel Harms on this, this cisfinite thinking of, uh, um, of of uh, the Russian absurd literature and the zero, the, the, the zero, the mathematics, what we had with Grigori Maifet, with Oksana now, and the mathematics of all of this. And uh, this, the promise shooting at, at this between presence and absence. And so 
I thought, but you cannot find this with Bohdan, Ihor, Antonich, I think, and with modernism and symbolism. I think you would need absurd literature, avant-garde, or even postmodernism or something like this. And this leads me to the, the last part of this. Sorry for this really difficult question, but I'm really interested in it. Because um, if uh, Bilecki was so much interested in Simeon Polotsky and Baroque literature, I mean, I only read... Uh, uh, this Vertograd Mnogocvetny of Polotsky, but but uh, in I think in Russian formalism it comes a lot with Tristram uh, uh, Shandy by Lauren Stern, what uh, what Oksana mentioned. So this kind of baroque thing, so this this uh, always excursus and the priomi of uh, oxymora and allegorization and things like this. Uh, so, but. Um, but but is it how could you work on on Bohdan Ihor and Ponich with with the concept like like uh, Tanyanov or is he is he not so close to Yuri Tanyanov? I mean, my, by your super interesting talk, I came to the point that he's very close to Tanyanov. Perhaps it's not true because I did not read too much Bilecki. I have to say, uh, so it would be super interesting if you could a little bit comment on this for personal interest. Uh, thank you, Alexander. I try to be uh, quick and short. Uh, uh, for me, uh, Belesky mostly interested in uh, semi-psychological, semi-cognitive uh, uh, approach to uh, poetics, uh, especially for him. Uh, the main figure in the West was, uh, for example, Müller Freienfels. Uh, from Germany, not uh, Lewis Levin Schuking uh, in sociology of literary testes, uh, and uh, not Oskar Walzel uh, as for Germunsky case, but uh, especially this maybe old fashioned psychological aesthetics. Uh, but uh, uh, for me, uh, maybe Jakubski was more interested in, in kind to try sociological and formalist. Uh, synthesis. Uh, for Belecki, the main problem was uh, uh, literary of, or maybe more interesting problem, was the uh, uh, problem of literary reader and reader uh, reception. Uh, in Ukrainian uh, uh, tradition uh, exists the uh, idea that Belecki was some kind of predecessor of uh, uh, Wolfgang Iser or um, Yao's uh, exactly. reception aesthetics, but for me it's uh, some kind of mistake because uh, Belecki have very good and very deep intuition, uh, especially in revolutionary period of intuition uh, to be the voice of uh, speak for a new generation of young poetry, especially in uh, Ukrainian voices. But uh, he, uh, uh, he described only first approach to this problem. His psychological intellectual background give uh, Belecki uh, some uh, reason. But uh, really uh, output was uh, uh, not so uh, interesting. And uh, uh, Tinyanov, for example, was far more popular uh, than Belecki. Uh, Belecki uh, maybe uh, in 20 and even in the 30 was in the shadow of much more popular uh, Zerov in Kiev or maybe uh, Opoyas uh, circle uh, in Russia. So uh, for me, idea not to um, overestimate Belecki as uh, um, some kind of uh, uh, Mikhail Bakhtin or maybe Vinogradov. Belecki is very interesting figure, but uh, not uh, he is not genius for me. But he is very interesting figure between old and new, as I try to put in my contribution. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so please, Professor Litsky. Um, first, let me apologize. Um, I had lost power in the house and I didn't hear uh, all the uh, uh, papers. I caught the beginning of, uh, of uh, Dmitriev's uh, paper and uh, Oksana's. 
uh, and I caught the end. Uh, I have a question for uh, uh, Oksana. Uh, I, I think that um, Maifid is a very interesting figure. And um, um, my question is this, uh, you um, attribute to Hvelevé the um, trend to professionalize uh, writing, which is of course uh, correct. I, I agree with that as well. I, I'm just wondering also whether or not you wouldn't, uh, however, uh, give some credit to uh, Ukrainian futurists in this respect. Uh, I think both Biletsky and uh, uh, Maifet uh, did recognize that the futurists played an important role in uh, uh, the professionalization of uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, prose, and in particular, uh, their uh, desire to imitate uh, American fiction, the plot-oriented uh, kind of uh, uh, professional uh, writing. Uh, so I was wondering whether uh, in, in your own work, you see the futurist as playing a, a crucial role in uh, professionalizing uh, Ukrainian uh, prose, and as they put it, to make it more uh, accessible and, uh, and readable for the average uh, person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, it, it's very interesting. Um, it's it's very interesting uh, point. Uh, uh, I think in this. Uh, period uh, uh, 1920s uh, the problem of professionalization we can uh, uh, describe uh, as a very practical uh, side as a, um, as a, the activity of fluke uh, maybe uh, uh, the uh, critics uh, or the um, uh, writer uh, can uh, uh, teach another um, uh, another um, uh, matters a matters writer uh, write uh, good uh, good literary work, uh, but uh, this uh, it's very practical uh, and uh, I think in this way the test of Hvelevi and the tests and the uh, ideas of uh, Pilipenka is. Uh, uh, very, it's uh, something similar. I, uh, I think it's uh, Pluch and Pluzhani is not very, uh, it's not such uh, um, uh, simple for, uh, uh, for, for simple for, for uh, interpretation. It's, uh, they have very um, healthy idea for um, I think for uh, professionalization, uh, the literary situation of Ukraine and, and many of writers in this period uh, uh, had uh, the school of Pluzhanin. I think maybe I can um, answer this way, but uh, so uh, in, uh, we have the activity of Pluk and we have the uh, the same idea uh, which we formulated in the, in the intellectual maybe provocation and uh, uh, a claim to change the literary situation. Maybe it's, uh, it's the same idea, but it uh, describes uh, in the intellect, in, uh, more intellectual, pro, uh, um, uh, more intellect, intellectually maybe. And my fit, maybe it's, uh, for, for me, it's very strange uh, that my fit try to unit, to combine this, uh, um, this um, attitudes to, uh, professionalization, maybe is the literary situation. Maybe I try to uh, explain this way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Michal Murugalski, please. Thank you. I have a question for Natalia Vasatyuk and for uh, uh, Aksana Pashko. Uh, the first question concern, uh, is addressed uh, uh, to 
Natalia. Uh, if I may, and it comes, it's a small uh, factual question. You mentioned Julius Kleiner and that your hero agreed with the conception of him. And I would like to ask about the title of the contribution. Was it the analysis, uh, Analisa Dzieła, analysis of the literary work? And my second question to Aksana Paszko uh, concerns the uh, terminological issues, because you spoke uh, about short story. I guess I saw the notion novella in the beautiful scheme you showed and would, would, would correspond with the English terms novella or novelletta even, because the short story would be rather rascas or even povich, something uh, more amorphic than a novella, which can be so beautifully showed. <laughs> so um, my, my question concerns his definition of uh, the novella as a genre. What's the difference between the novella and other rights of uh, writing short prose? And secondly, um, there was this beautiful study by Yanis Fotidis uh, made a, a couple of years back. I'm asking this because you mentioned his mathematical skills or his knowledge in mathematics, where he tried to model <laughs> exactly the criteria behind uh, anthologies of uh, nov novellas. Yeah? What criteria uh, were... Uh, the, well, what criteria decided about picking a short story that uh, it uh, makes it to this uh, anthology? And I was wondering whether he uh, defined uh, novellas and uh, could um, so can generalize this beautiful scheme um, on other... Uh, was the scheme you showed, uh, uh, did it apply only to one? novella or to a group of novellas who all, let's say, surpassed uh, the core of the novella and had this uh, circuit between the beginning and the end, which surpassed the development of the actions. So that this is how I understood this scheme you showed. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, Boris Yakubski mentioned um, the work um, Julian Klein, uh, Ju, uh, Julius Kleiner's work, uh, Content and Form in Poetry. Uh, it was published in 1924. Uh, it is, it's a very short remark uh, by uh, Boris Jakubski in his uh, second monography, uh, The Sociological Method in Literature. It is uh, the monography of uh, Boris Jakubski monography was published in 1923. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure whether Jakubski uh, read the article of Julius Kleiner uh, because, he, because he referred to the article of another uh, Marxist critic and we, we talked about him yesterday. Uh, Jakubski referred to the article uh, written by um, Volodymyr Koryak. Uh, entitled Form and Content. It's the article uh, published in 1922. And uh, Boris Yakubsky in his uh, so The Sociological Method in Literature make a very short review of a Polish, uh, po Polish research, research researches on literary theory. He mentioned only Julius Kleiner and in negative uh, connotations, he mentioned Ignaz Witkiewicz. And he said that his conception is uh, pure metaphysics, not pure form, but pure metaphysics. And um, I haven't seen any uh, references to any other Polish theorist in his works. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your questions. Uh, I agree that uh, there, is a, there is a problem uh, how we um, try to distinguish novel and short story. But uh, in this uh, talk, I try to use the uh, um, definition of Myfit. Myfit uh, in the uh, letters to Zerov, uh, um, 
uh, mentioned these uh, books of American critics and uh, uh, give the synonym short story novella. So I, in this uh, uh, talk, uh, used his conception. For him, novella and short story is uh, similar. So uh, maybe it's not uh, correct, uh, but uh, uh, in this first uh, approach to the uh, to the uh, to the reconstruction of the theory of short story by my fit i try to use his own uh, interpretation of novella novella for my fit uh, for um, my fit uh, have to uh, um, have to um, uh, need need the climax uh, it's a necessary part for uh, novella or short story in this time. The synonyms for my um, uh, for for his uh, for his interpretation, uh, and in uh, the letter uh, in the letter in 1960s uh, uh, um, letters to uh, Pavlo Rotec, he tried to find novella, real novella, how it uh, can imagine, uh, how it can, can uh, um, distinguish uh, in uh, literary, in Ukrainian literature 1960. And he said, there are no novel, uh, there aren't any novella in the, uh, in the modern Ukrainian literature. Uh, after war, it's uh, for for him. It's uh, uh, different between uh, short story and novella. Is a climax. It's a uh, um, it's a uh, it's a more um, more expressive and uh, short and uh, uh, more um, uh, maybe prov provocative for 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 reader and more attractive for reader. Uh, I think I can answer uh, such way in uh, your first question. And uh, um, for uh, second question, I uh, try to maybe explain more about, uh, uh, I, show, uh, I showed uh, two uh, shims uh, uh, from uh, uh, two different short story. One, it's a circle, it's uh, shims for, uh, Novella or short stories, Schnitzler, a dream and reality. And uh, this is a uh, coops uh, and um, uh, another images, it's a uh, it uh, shim uh, which interpret uh, the short story Arkady Lubchenko Bio Dolorosa. And uh, I try to comment uh, uh, the another shim as a circle and the ellipse, different circle and ellipse as a uh, attempt to interpret, uh, interpret uh, the short story by Conrad. Uh, so if, uh, it's different models for composition, maybe for reconstruction, the composition or structure of short story. Uh, he proposed method, but he proposed another um, uh, mathematics uh, models for uh, for liter for uh, description uh, of uh, literary uh, specific of literary genre. Maybe this uh, answer on your second question. Thank you. As we don't still have this next question, so I will uh, allow myself to make uh, two brief comments and uh, a question. Um, I think, Oksana, it's uh, important uh, to say here uh, regarding the first question that I think it's a typical uh, Ukrainian invention, if I'm not right, please correct me, uh, to distinguish between novella and short story. Um, because when I studied at Kharkiv University, we actually distinguished it. I don't know what you're do doing in uh, Shevchenko's University or Kiev Mohila Academy, yeah. Uh, but actually, um, as I remember, yeah, novella is something that uh, should end uh, uh, like um, unexpected, unexpected, and short story 
um, like um, rules with the other <laughs> det details. Generally. Yeah, something like this. So, and I didn't actually. I would have never paid attention to it um, uh, before, but now I understand that it's a kind of tradition, probably from like the 1920s. Uh, it's a very interesting, interesting question um, how it appeared. I'm sure that in in Polish literary studies, you don't do it. No, okay, yeah. Do we do? Of course we ah, do. You, you also and in do, Germany yeah. as well, and in the ah, okay. So I'm not right. I'm blocked so on word that they also have those two two terms. Because in uh, so may I ask Andre? Because in like American studies, uh, I I didn't um, uh, I didn't notice that the division of novella or short story it's uh, more like synonyms, no? I believe so. I think it's a very uh, European concept, you know, between the short story and novella altogether. I, I, I'm not familiar with any definition. I mean, in general, it's just called stories. Everything comes under one umbrella. Uh -huh, yeah, um, but uh, I think it's very distinctive between, uh, you know, short story, which will be Raskas, and novella, which will be, let's say, medium length. Right, so if we, if we look at this, but um, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think Conrad was calling his his stories uh, novellas, even though you know it would be. And then there is, of course, an issue of povist, right? Which is what what is it? What is povist? Short novel or uh, something long that is novella? bigger than short uh, story? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I understand, but is it a short novel or is it a big novella? Ah, okay, yeah, right? it's true. <laughs> a long novella, so, so yeah, um, and in Conrad's case especially, you know, because it's uh, basically all his stories are novellas, you know, he doesn't have a short ones, so it's uh, it's very pertinent in this context. Mm, thank you. And another one comment regarding the question of um, Alekh um, Actually, yeah, let me think in this direction. And um, uh, I, I would like to agree with you. Um, I don't know what do you think, uh, Oksana, but I think that um, uh, the Futurists played a, a great role in the struggle for professionalization of this field, of course, uh, by uh, uh, by how say Hodinia Munarut, <laughs> starting from 1924, probably, yeah. Um, and uh, by uh, uh, by, for example, writing a kind of formalist novels like Georg Krupi or Julian Spol, Vicinata, yeah. So we can say so that they uh, reflect themselves as uh, professional writers and they uh, tried to professionalize this uh, sphere. Um, where the uh, the environment, yeah, let, let's say so. Um, and um, I have a, a, actually two very brief questions to Oksana that I was interested um, in when I just opened the second volume of my fed. Um, actually, he uh, uh, refers to Shengeli and Shklovsky, uh, as you pointed out, uh, when he talks about style and uh, smug taste yeah, uh, of the reader. Uh, but also he says um, an interesting uh, thing about Tomaszewski. He says, of course, Tomaszewski in his work from 1925 uh, on this theory of literature touches upon this question. But as uh, this uh, book is of another quality, uh, I wouldn't um, uh, like analyze or appeal to it. So it's very interesting why he puts Tomaszewski on a um, uh, different, uh, let me say, uh, <laughs> uh, level, yeah? Um, and he has uh, this strong division between Schengeli, uh, Kapisat Stichy, Shklovsky, Technika, Pisati, Skorizm, Sla, and Tomaszewski, um, theory of literature. And uh, the second kind of question or brief comment uh, is uh, the uh, appeal of Johansson and Maybet to the American novel as uh, Johansson also analyzes American novels, yeah? Um, uh, maybe it's just because of the very material, uh, just to show the application of formal methods, they needed this uh, uh, aventure prose, yeah? Which is very intense 
um, and uh, constructed yeah, in, in, in a special way. So it could be one of the explanations. Uh, yeah, And also um, uh, appearing to, um, yeah, I forgot this Marxist critic from Russian, Bukharin, yeah. Bukharin that we need uh, red Pinkertons, yeah. Uh, so probably it was like a kind of, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Alina, for these interesting questions uh, about uh, short story and uh, novella. It's a problem, I know, but uh, I based on the letter uh, to Zerov, Mayfit to Zerov, where Mayfit um, uh, Mayfit used novella and short story as a synonym. So maybe it's not correct uh, for me as a researcher um, continue this uh, way of interpretation, but uh, it's first uh, step for reconstruction, the theory of short stories. So I, uh, uh, I decide to, uh, to go, by, uh, to go uh, after the Mayfit and his interpretation. Maybe it can change uh, uh, in the future. Uh, but I, I uh, would like uh, to point uh, and to remember about uh, uh, another article by Echenbaum about Genry. And, he, and Echenbaum used short story as a synonym of novella, uh, I think. Uh, maybe I, I was uh, it mistake, it's my mm, mistakeable interpretation, but I think it's a synonym. Maybe it's a pro, it's a traditional for 1920s. I don't know. Uh, I don't uh, uh, research this uh, theme uh, uh, more more detailed. Uh, but uh, about to, uh, which uh, which uh, uh, literary critics uh, uh, is. Um, uh, uh, the, the mention it, uh, which uh, liter which Mayfit uh, mentioned the uh, um, literary critics. Uh, there are many names. It's Shklovsky, Shengeli, Tomaszewski, Zhermunski, and uh, um, other, other, but uh, uh, my talk is not very um, uh, long, so I uh, try to Folk, uh, focused uh, on uh, maybe uh, the main ideas, the main figures, uh, uh, which important for uh, for interpretation of um, a problem, which I try to uh, analyze. Um, uh, so, um, and third question, Alina, I. Uh, I... Yeah, about American prose. Uh, is a very good American prose. I agree with you about Pinkerton. I, I thought about it. Maybe it's a mainstream. Maybe it's a mainstream. Uh, but I think for, uh, for my fit, it's very important the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian literary situation because he analyzed Conrad because uh, in this time, uh, Conrad was translated Ukrainian. Kalinovich and Vilkhovy was translated, and it's uh, the stimul. It's a uh, um, it's a stimul for interpretation. Conrad in Ukrainian for 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 my thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, because your dance and analysis, as I remember, um, uh, you probably you don't know this author, John Barry. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of time looking for who it was, yeah. Uh, so it's, it, it was his like an unpredictable choice, um, not as convert. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, next question from Andre. Uh, it's, it's not a question, just a remark. It's very interesting that, Aksana, that you mentioned uh, Eichenbaum. Um, in this context, because then the younger generation of uh, formalists that came on one hand and were called Mlada Formaliste in, in Leningrad and the other part that comes in Moscow, in Gachon, especially Mikhail Petrovsky, uh, they differentiate short story and novella very much so. As, as much as Petrovsky publishes a real uh, thorough uh, study called Morphologia Novelli, in, in Ars Poetica in 1927. So uh, they kind of develop the first approach that formalists take on a um, short form of prose, 
you know, I mean, anything that is shorter than the novel. Uh, but by by the end of the 1920s, the formalist school definitely makes the demarcation between what short story means and what novella is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Professor Nitsky, please. Uh, unmute. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, just a little footnote. Oh, speaking about um, short stories, novellas, and uh, uh, formalism, it's interesting that when this kind of uh, formalistic uh, prose begin to began to appear in Ukraine, um, that. Uh, at least one critic, Felix Yakubovsky, said that this is pid praporum americanismo, mm -hmm. uh, so that this uh, formalist uh, prose trend uh, could be associated with uh, American literature or imitation of uh, American literature uh, in particular. And I think um, many uh, a writer and critic uh, tended to, to mention this fact uh, during the 1920s. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Any any other questions, please? Like we have, uh, of course, we don't have time, but still, maybe uh, some of you would like to ask like the last question. Uh, okay. In this case, uh, let me thank to all of the speakers and to all uh, of the. Um, uh, participants, I mean our guests. Um, uh, let's, let's I uh, as decide. Uh, I suggest uh, to to make a pause for ten minutes.